Good evening, and welcome to our little worship workout that we're having tonight as we get ready for church tomorrow. Hope and pray you are having a good evening, and as we gather together, uh, I would like to uh, get started. We'll have a hymn in a little bit. We'll talk about the particular day of the church here, which is the sixth Sunday uh, of Easter, and so uh, the sixth Sunday of Easter is kind of like a little mini Pentecost uh, because it deals heavily with the Holy Spirit and uh, how Jesus Christ sent us the Holy Spirit. Uh, and as we look at the different readings, that all ties in as well. As we look at the gospel, which is our text from John, John chapter 14, verses 16 through 21, uh, there we see that uh, the person and work of the Holy Spirit are described for us. And also we see in Psalm 66, the words, Come and hear all you who fear God, and I will tell what he has done for my soul. And who would have thought that God would send us another advocate, another uh, paraclete, as it is in the Greek, to be with us, the Holy Spirit to be in us forever, no less. And in the first reading from Acts, uh, it talks about the God who made the world and everything in it, the Lord of heaven and earth, how he does not live in temples made by man. Instead, uh, Christ has promised to uh, come to us and the Holy Spirit lives inside of us and uh, the gift of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit is a precious gift that we have and 1 Peter chapter 3 uh, teaches us that we share in Christ's uh, resurrection victory by virtue of our baptism, which now saves us. And of course, in the uh, sacrament of holy baptism, we also receive the Holy Spirit and the gift of faith. So good evening, Christina. Good evening, Karen. Great to see you. Good evening, Anne. Good e evening, Gladys. Uh, and um, Julie, good evening to you as well, and great to see you all tonight. Uh, blessings in our Savior's name. Speaking of blessings, our first hymn that uh, we'll sing in the hymns, Good Evening Lorna, uh, Cadillac, Michigan. All right, glad that you are with us tonight. So we're going to sing Lutheran Service Book, hymn number 904, Blessed Jesus at Your Word. Blessed Jesus at Your Word, we are gathered all to hear You. Let our hearts and souls be stirred now to seek and love and fear You. By your teachings sweet and holy, drawn from earth to love you solely. All our knowledge, sense, and sight lie in deepest darkness shrouded. Till your spirit breaks our night with the beams of truth unclouded. You alone to God can win us. You must work all good within us. Gracious Savior, good and kind, light of light from God proceeding. Open now our heart and mind. Help us by your Spirit's pleading. Hear the cry your church now raises, hear and bless our prayers and praises. Father, Son, and Spirit, Lord, praise to you and adoration. Grant that we may trust your word, 
confident of our salvation. While we here below must wander, till we sing your praises yonder. So a very good hymn, that's 904. Uh, a good hymn to use tomorrow, if you've got a hymnal or if you can find it online, and uh, have that be your, your prayer before worship. And it ties in with the, the Holy Spirit, uh, the paraclete, uh, as we have our mini Pentecost Sunday this coming Sunday. Uh, that uh, stanza, that... Uh, Really, both metal two stanzas in that hymn uh, go into the gift of the Holy Spirit and what he means to us, tying in with what Jesus said about the Holy Spirit also in our text. So, as we continue onward, we will uh, go to another hymn, and this also deals with the Spirit um, in the context of Jesus' entire life. Uh, this hymn is all about our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and uh, from really thinking about John's gospel going from the very first chapter, it, it's all in this hymn up into uh, the end of it, and of course, including talking about the paraclete uh, as we get towards the final stanzas. So there, there are seven of them, and uh, I'll sing it. I'll sing it a little lower, maybe. I don't have my capo on my guitar. Hi, Mariah. Good evening. Glad to see you tonight. So we're going to sing hymn 544 in the Lutheran service book. Uh, oh, love, how deep. Oh, love, how deep, how broad, how high, beyond all thought and fantasy, that God, the Son of God, should take our mortal form for mortal's sake. He sent no angel to our race of higher or of lower place, but wore the robe of human frame, and to this world himself he came. For us baptized, for us he bore his holy fast and hungered sore. For us temptation sharp he knew, for us the tempter overthrew. For us he prayed, for us he taught, for us his daily works he wrought. By words and signs and actions thus, Still seeking not himself but us. For us by wickedness betrayed, For us in crown of thorns arrayed, He bore the shameful cross and death, For us he gave his dying breath. For us he rose from death again, for us he went on high to reign, for us he sent his spirit here to guide, to strengthen, and to cheer. All glory to our Lord and God For love so deep, so high, so broad The Trinity whom we adore Forever and forevermore That's kind of like an epic uh, hymn, right, that tells the epic 
true story of Jesus's saving work, including his birth, death, resurrection, ascension, sending the Holy Spirit, coming on the last day, strengthening us and helping us by that gift of the Spirit. So, we'll dive in, we'll kind of look at our text a little bit right now, uh, verse by verse by verse as we look at that. And uh, so if you happen to have your Bible, uh, turn to John chapter 14, and there you will see what we are talking all about tonight with the gospel lesson and the text for the sermon uh, that we are having this Sunday. So I can't wait for that, but uh, as I look forward to that, I also want to just celebrate and, and enjoy this time with you tonight as we prepare our hearts for worship on the Lord's Day. So, uh, in John chapter 14, we'll, we'll go to 15, uh, verse 15, and uh, we will start there. And it says, uh, Jesus is talking, of course, he says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. So this is part of what is called Jesus's farewell discourse. And in this particular farewell discourse in the Gospel of John, it includes five uh, references to the Holy Spirit, to the paraclete. Uh, the paraclete, or the Holy Spirit, uh, is the, the topic here of, of what we're talking about in many respects. So what is the paraclete? That word has been translated a lot of different ways, counselor, helper, advocate, comforter. And um, as we look at Jesus's farewell discourse, we have the, the five different sayings about the paraclete. And in all five of these things, the uh, term paraclete is used for the Holy Spirit. So uh, understanding the Holy Spirit is important for us as Christians because it's through the Spirit, Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, that we come to faith. And it is also through the Holy Spirit that we live out the life of faith, the, our, our, our life as believers in Jesus Christ. And so whether you're a longtime believer or a new believer, you need to know about the Holy Spirit because he is at work in us to bring us to faith, to keep us in faith, and to help us live out our faith. So, in terms of living as a Christian, that is a lot of what this text is talking about. And so, it's not because we love God that God chooses then to love us in return. That's not the the gist or, or the meaning of the text in any way. Actually, as we look at the whole Gospel of John, we see God first loved us. And as a response, we also now, as believers in Jesus Christ, uh, seek to love God and, and serve our neighbors. So, love is emphasized, love's repeating pattern throughout our life of receiving God's love. And this happens in worship too, receiving God's love and then showing forth God's love in our lives by what we do say and think, a continuing attitude, continuing uh, cycle, if you will, of love. And um, as we think about this and, and, and about the, the words of Jesus, uh, and, and his words in particular, if you love me, you will keep my commandments, you, you could... Uh, take that word commandments and run with it in the wrong direction. Uh, Martin Luther gets us running in the right direction. So that is a good thing. I've got my Martin Luther shirt on tonight. So we'll look at a, a Martin Luther quote. Uh, and uh, so here's what Luther says in um, volume 24 of Luther's works, Sermons on the Gospel of St. John, chapters 14 through 16. And isn't it great that the, just the whole volume of Luther's works is sermons on those three, four chapters? Well, however many, 14, 15, 16, I guess it's three. I can do math, right? Anyways, uh, so um, here we, we see what Luther says. And no, notice how he um, works with this particular verse and text. Uh, so Luther said, uh, he, Jesus, does not want us to be encumbered again with the 
uh, intolerable burden of the law, uh, for we um, find that where laws rule, especially over conscience, there is no end of commands and precepts. So Luther's speaking of all the human commands that we tend to add, add to the law. One law leads to a hundred new ones, and these hundred multiply into a hundred thousand. I can almost hear that in German. Uh, therefore, uh, Luther says, Christ says, I do not impose anything else on you. Uh, I ask and demand no more th than this one thing that you faithfully preach about uh, me. Watch over my word and sacrament. Show affection and harmony among one another for my sake and patiently bear the adversities that this entails for you. So Luther has uh, read, Mark, learned, and inwardly digest God's word, in particular the Gospel of John, to the point where he knows exactly uh, what Jesus is referring to with his command here. And of course, as we read, Mark, learn, and inwardly digest God's word in the Gospel of John, it becomes apparent to us also that this is not uh, a, a form of legalism. Uh, Jesus is not seeking to bind us to the law here, uh, but uh, talking about the life that is lived out in us by the power of the Spirit. So uh, that is why Luther talks the way he does. Uh, and so Luther goes on to say, uh, these are the brief commandments which Christ calls my commandments. And these, he says, I impose on you only if you love me and gladly keep them for my sake. Uh, for us, I guess we could say this, that this is the third use of the law that is being emphasized. Uh, the use of the law that only applies to the believer in Jesus Christ, using the law as a guide in our lives so that as the Spirit directs us, we understand how God wants us to live in this cycle of love, knowing that God first loved us, and then now in that love, we share that love uh, for God and others. So, as we look at verse 15, uh, and how our text starts out, uh, we can definitely see it in the context of Jesus's words where he says, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do and greater works than these will he do. Naturally, we're left to wonder, well, how can we do greater works than Jesus? And Jesus is envisioning the whole church at work through all time in history, reaching out and proclaiming the message of Jesus Christ, led and empowered by the Spirit of God. That's how it is done. It's not because we are great that we do these greater works. It's because the Holy Spirit is working in us. And so for the first time, uh, Jesus here in the fourth gospel, the gospel of John, uh, who had frequently spoken of his love for us now, and only now, he speaks of our uh, obedient and willing love for him. Love that loves the Savior. Reminds me of the song, Oh, How I Love Jesus. Uh, throughout uh, Throughout uh, John's writings, the gospel and, and the letters of John, we see that connection. So, for example, in the book of 1 John, uh, when we get there, it's, it's a little hard for me to turn the pages of my Bible because I must be accident prone. Well, I, I ordered on Amazon. My wife uh, 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 likes baking bread in the bread machine, so I ordered her a nice bread cutting knife that will cut the slices nicely. So I was washing that up in the sink this morning and drew it across my thumb and didn't bleed, but I got kind of a big um, kind of version of a paper cut, except made with a knife on my thumb and uh, 
So that makes turning the Bible pages a little uncomfortable, but we can do it. So here we are in 1 John chapter 5, verse 3, and it says, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome, for everyone who is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? And looking at that passage, you can understand then why, why good old Martin Luther said the things that he said about this particular passage. So all of that from the very first verse. Uh, we'll, we'll move along now. Uh, we'll keep her moving, as they say, and go on to the next verse, verse 16, uh, and I will ask the Father, Jesus said, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. So this gets to uh, that paraclete that we were talking about and uh, we see that Paraclete is uh, Greek for literally to call alongside or to encourage. Uh, think in your life of all of those who have encouraged you along the way. Uh, counselor is, is a viable translation as long as you think of a, a legal counselor, perhaps a legal friend, uh, someone who speaks in your defense and advocates for you. So uh, that is the meaning of counselor here if you see some of the translations that use the word counselor for paraclete. Not camp counselor as much as I enjoyed and my wife enjoyed being camp counselors or as many camp counselors as we've had. Uh, that's a wonderful thing of course but a little different meaning and not marriage counselor either but uh, counselor in that legal sense of the term. Uh, comforter, in the versions that have comforter, people like that translation, but it's important to understand exactly what's going on when we say comforter. Uh, that in, for example, the I think the King James Version and, and other more traditional versions of the Bible, uh, draw that word from the Latin word confortare, uh, which means to strengthen uh, it is not uh, in the sense of like a comforter like you might have on your bed or something like that. That is the image that uh, some people have of comforter and that really isn't what we're talking about with the Holy Spirit here. So the Spirit is called another paraclete. Why is he called another? Well, we see that Jesus also is our paraclete. He is our advocate before the Father. That is also why he came, of course, now as he's addressing the disciples, he's getting them ready for his death by crucifixion and when he will uh, die. Uh, so that is why he's talking about the Spirit here, uh, giving them the promise of the Spirit. Uh, for Jesus needs to suffer and die and rise from the dead and ascend into heaven to be able to send the Holy Spirit. And so he's taking the long view uh, on things and giving them this promise. The paraclete is indeed called the spirit of truth because the Holy Spirit of God communicates the truth, the truth about Jesus. He's, I always say, the shy person of the Trinity because he doesn't point to himself. He points to the, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit points to Jesus, and so if we if we think about you know how the the Holy Spirit is described in, in John and elsewhere, we see that uh, similar language is used to describe the Holy Spirit and Jesus. In the case of Paraclete here, uh, we see that both Jesus and the Spirit are given or sent by the Father. Uh, both Jesus and the Spirit are with and in the disciples. Uh, both the Spirit and, and Jesus are not received, known, or seen by the world. Interestingly, after Jesus rose from the dead and he appeared to the disciples, it's to the disciples he appeared, not to uh, 
by and large the the non-believing world uh, and and to those that he was about to convert also like we see with Paul on the Damascus road we see that both Jesus and the Holy Spirit teach and lead us into the fullness of all truth both Jesus and the Spirit uh, come to us and um, glorify the one who sent them namely the Father uh, both the Spirit and Jesus give testimony, reveal, disclose, and proclaim. Uh, both Jesus and the Holy Spirit convict the world. Both Jesus and the Holy Spirit speak not from self, but from what is heard, what uh, is given to them to say by the Father. Uh, and Jesus is truth, and the Spirit is the Spirit of truth. So all of these parallels between Jesus and the Spirit and how they are spoken of. And when the term world is used here, it, it's not just talking about planet Earth, but really the moral order in rebellion against God. The world is materialistic, not just in the I love money sense of the word, but but, oh, th <laughs> I see, Gladys, that you love the shirt. I believe I got this shirt from you. So thank you for the shirt. Uh, very good. Uh, and uh, so that that is good. Um, and uh, so the world uh, is against God because it's materialistic, not just loving stuff, but uh, only abiding by what can be seen, only putting trust in what can be seen. The world is very suspicious, <laughs> almost paranoid, of what cannot be seen. And uh, so that is why, when it comes to the spirit, uh, the world just does not get it nor understand when it comes to Jesus. Apart from the spirit, the world cannot understand. And the disciples, though they're very confused right now as Jesus speaks this farewell discourse, Jesus is, is lovingly saying to them, and sometimes we need to hear this too, that, that we understand uh, Jesus better than we may think at the moment when we find ourselves in confusion uh, because, because Jesus has said that he will send us the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, to help us. So as we go on in our text, we see in John chapter 14, verse uh, 18, I will not leave you as orphans, beloved words, and, and rightly so. We see the, the raw emotion of it uh, as Jesus prepares to leave his disciples to, to suffer and die on the cross. One can hardly contain oneself when one, one thinks of just the meaning of, of, I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. And people have wondered about, well, what does that mean? Is Jesus talking about his resurrection appearances? Is Jesus talking about uh, the sending of the Holy Spirit? Is Jesus talking about his coming on the last day? And there are good reasons why you could say all of the above, uh, and yet, in the broader context of this farewell discourse, as Jesus is talking about, about that, that impending hour that is coming up, the hour of his suffering and death, we realize that, and, and with the personal way he's speaking now, he's talking about leaving them as he does when he dies on the cross and rejoining them as he de will do after he is raised from the dead. Uh, so he's giving them this promise. One can almost imagine the scenario uh, of them saying, well, okay, you're promising us the Spirit, Jesus, but what about you? <laughs> and they don't understand that the, the Spirit leads us to Christ and points us to Christ and gives us faith in Christ and helps us live in Christ. Uh, they don't understand all of that just yet. Um, but Jesus mercifully, lovingly lets them know that that he will not leave them as orphans. Um, that saying, by the way, orphans at, at that time could refer not to only, not only to people who lost both parents, but to people who may have lost one or the other parents or, or any important person, including uh, a teacher. Uh, uh, and certainly this would apply with Jesus's relationship with his disciples. So that is what is uh, going on here. Uh, with uh, this particular 
papers. And um, so as we, as we look at what Jesus is saying, we'll, we'll go on a little bit. Uh, I think we were at verse 18. Jesus says, Yet a little while, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. Very clear connection drawing here to uh, drawing to see the, like the, the intersection between Easter and Pentecost. And so that's why the, this Sunday in Easter is, is that little Pentecost, because the two are definitely connected. Uh, Mariah Andrew says hi also. Uh, thank you for saying hi to him and uh, hope you are doing well. As we continue on, then we'll kind of finish up our text a lot more. We could talk about it and we'll talk about when it comes to the sermon tomorrow. Uh, so as we finish out our text, it says, In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him him and manifest myself to him. And that is how our text ends. Um, so in that final verse, to have doesn't mean simply to possess, but also to grasp with the mind, not only to grasp with the mind, but to show forth Jesus's commands in our lives. Uh, and so what Jesus is talking about here in terms of this pattern, this cycle of love when it comes to obeying Jesus's commands, it is not just lip service, but it is something that is, is real. And that is um, all part of that ongoing relationship between Jesus and those who believe in him, between Jesus and his disciples. Um, and it's not that we take the initiative, Jesus has taken the initiative and first loved us. He comes to us. He sends us his spirit. He works in us. And uh, we thank and praise him for that. Absolutely. So those are a few thoughts as we do our little worship workout, getting ready for the service tomorrow. Please do join us for that. And uh, that's at 9 o'clock. You can find us on YouTube and uh, Facebook Live if you'd like to uh, drive over to church and park in the parking lot. We're having our FM broadcast. Also, uh, God willing, all those things work out properly. I know tomorrow's going to be a little bit rainy. We'll see what happens with that and how many come. But for those that do, we will definitely be broadcasting. God's peace, God's blessings to you this night. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for your promise not to leave us as orphans. Sometimes we feel that way as, as we are bereft of various things, as we experience grief in all of its forms. We give you thanks, however, for that victory that is ours both in your resurrection, Jesus, and in your promise of the Spirit in love, that we can live in that love which you have first given us. In your dear name we pray. Amen. Well, that should do it for tonight. God's blessings once again to all of you. Uh, and thanks again, Gladys, for the Martin Luther shirt. And we will see you soon. You take care and peace be to all of you.